Well, welcome back. We've been looking at more complex patterns of inheritance in humans. And when we're looking at human genetics, we typically apply a combination of methods that study inheritance patterns within families. Uh, and it's more complex than just dominance uh, and recessiveness. It's more complex than co-dominance and incomplete dominance. And yet the same basic principles of genetics are going to be the same in sexually reproducing organisms. Uh, the inheritance of many human traits, however, is complex. Uh, there are single gene traits uh, and there are others that are controlled by more than one uh, gene. Uh, and yet, of course, the single, the single gene traits are those uh, which help us to understand uh, the more complex patterns of inheritance that we find. So there's a couple different tools that we use in examining those. All right. Now, before we get into this, we have to really appreciate um, those kinds of traits that are sex linked. In other words, a sex linked trait is carried on by an X and a Y chromosome. Normally, we're looking at those chromosomes that are the female, the X chromosome, when we look at sex-linked uh, disorders. So males, as you know, they are X and Y, and they're going to express all the sex-linked genes. And the reason why that is because there's no other allele on that smaller Y chromosome uh, that you see here that's going to mask over any recessive gene that's located on the X chromosome. And over here on the left, you can see there are some examples here. Uh, muscular dystrophy, uh, retinitis pigmentosa, uh, color blindness, red-green color blindness is more typically observed in males than in females. And another disease, another illness known as hemophilia that you see here. Hemophilia is a blood disorder that makes it very difficult for, or for people to have blood clotting. Uh, when they cut themselves, they continue to bleed out. Uh, and that's more commonly observed uh, in males than in females. Now, uh, one of the ways that we examine and uncover these, excuse me, these kinds of traits is something known as a pedigree, which allows us to trace out different kinds of genes through a family line. And we just spoke a moment ago about sex-linked genes they're going to present a very different pattern within a pedigree than those genes that are found on autosomes. Autosomes, you typically have a relatively even balance of a trait from male to female, as you can see uh, in the chart here. If there's a recessive gene here, it's only going to appear uh, periodically within a family line because it's a recessive trait. Uh, and yet when we look at the uh, a sex related trait, we're going to see those traits are going to appear more frequently and higher frequency than uh, in males than in females, as you can see here. It's also true, for example, number four here in generation F1, that a trait uh, that's on the X chromosome uh, will not be expressed, but will be passed on from mother uh, to son. But a female, moving up to number two here, a female could be a carrier but not express that sex-linked trait. Of course, they have the other X chromosome with the possibility of a dominant allele that will mask over that recessive sex-linked disorder. Uh, and so we refer to these as carriers. And so, for example, a, a mother may be, for a mother, for example, may carry the gene of colorblindness, but she herself may have normal vision, and it may not be down into one of the offspring uh, that the uh, that colorblindness is expressed. Same thing with hemophilia uh, or the other sex-linked traits that reside on the X chromosome. And then there's another type of tool that we use, known as a karyotype. We're able to extract the chromosomes from cells uh, when we take a tissue sample. And we can uh, isolate these and we can line up the pairs of homologous chromosomes that you see pictured here down at the bottom. We can see the sex chromosomes, the X and Y at the bottom. Uh, 
So we have 22 autosomes, we have two sex chromosomes that are typical for a healthy individual, in this case, a male. So we have a picture of all the chromosomes and a karyotype can, very, can be very helpful in isolating damage to the chromosomes that you see pictured here. For example, there could be uh, segments here that are missing in chromosome number one or chromosome number three. In some cases, you could have a duplication of a chromosome that you find in chromosome number four or number 10 down here. Uh, and and uh, that is a condition known as trisomy. Uh, one of the illnesses that that can cause, you may have heard of before, is Down's uh, syndrome. And so this is a relatively straightforward way of getting a definitive diagnosis on some of those kinds of chromosomal mutations that we find. Again, karyotypes can show changes in chromosomes that wouldn't otherwise be detectable. So we looked at, in this study, we looked at pedigrees, which help us to, to examine a particular trait as it goes through a family line, and karyotypes as well, where we can observe uh, any large changes that occur uh, in a chromosome. Well, listen, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.